Hey guys, how you doing? This is Benjamin with Memory Exotics, and this here today, we're going to be looking at how to properly take your heat mat or whatever type of heat you're using to make sure that it's the right size for the bottom of your enclosure. Um, basically, we're trying to find what size is going to be fitting your ball python's enclosure. So, it's not too hard of something to figure out, but I have got about seven questions from emails and, you know, comments on YouTube and stuff like that. Probably was over seven, actually. Um, but we're going to be looking at just how to find the correct size. It's very simple, but it has to be done properly. So, first thing you're going to be, you know, thinking about. And if you get this, you basically completed the whole process. Is a heat gradient, okay? Snakes are not like us humans. With us humans, if you throw us in Antarctica, we can be fine if you give us just, you know, a really heavy coat. If you throw us in the desert, we can be fine if you give us shorts. And, you know, our body will sweat to keep us cool. Snakes can't sweat. Snakes can't put on a coat and then generate their own body temperature. Reptiles just aren't built for that, and that's not how their body works. Their body temperature changes with the environment. So, if they are to, if you throw them in Antarctica, you can put a coat on a snake, but if they're in Antarctica and the outside temperature is too cold, they're going to die, okay? Because they can't regulate their own body temperature. If you put them in something too hot, you can, you know, I guess put some water on them, but they can't regulate their own body temperature, so they're not going to do good. So, you need to have a heat gradient. And for our ball pythons, the perfect heat gradient, in my opinion, is on your hot side, 91 or 92, and then on your cool side, about 75 to 78. If you can get it down to 70, that would be ideal, just around room temperature, about 69 to 70. But we don't want the cold side dropping down too cold to like 69 or anything, which would be very hard to do anyways. And we don't want our hot side going over. The hot side is the most important. Don't want this going over about, mm, I'd say 93. Over 93 is too hot, okay? Even 95, you might say, that's pretty close to 90, it's too hot, okay? Um, so we need to make sure we have a proper heat gradient. So the easiest way to tell if your heat is the proper size is by doing two things. Number one, going in and making sure you have a heat gradient. So kind of, you know, let's say we have a tub right here, okay? I should have brought my heat gun down, but I didn't. Let's take this paper towel out, just to show you guys. So right here, this, let's say this is our hot side. We can take our temp gun or our thermometer, stick it right there, make sure it's about 90. Okay, make sure our thermostat's reading everything right. This should be at about 91 or 92. Once we move about here, this should be at about 80. And once we move to about here, this should be at about 75. Okay, this could be 85 and this could be about 78. But if this side gets to about 80, it's way too hot. Okay, this needs to be at about 75 to 70. So that's the easiest way. Uh, to tell. If you're a numbers person, you're going to love that because it's like, oh my gosh, just hit it. Make sure the middle's at about 80, that's at about 70, and the other one's at about 90, and you should be good. And if you do that, you're completely fine. And um, there are a few other things we'll look at, but the main, also general rule of thumb, besides just doing that, is that this should not cover any more than one third of the bottom of the cage. Now, I like that saying, and I don't like it, okay? It's good because it says that, you know, if people are out there, they can measure and go, oh crap, my heating element is above one-third, okay, and they don't have to use any numbers or anything, and they know that's bad, and they need to change it, but it also is bad because some people read that, and they don't see it as, that's the maximum, they see that as, as that's the standard, and they go and measure it, and then they get the heat tape that's at a third. That's not how you do it. Most of the time, from what I've seen, the heat element is about one about one-fifth to like one-seventh of the bottom of the enclosure. And I know some, to some people that will sound crazy, but that's the way that breeders and people that, you know, just keeping a pet, that's the best way to keep them successfully because they are able to have that heat gradient. If the entire thing is 90 degrees, they won't be able to survive in that because when their body needs to cool down, if everything's running too fast and their body just needs to have a chiller and a break, they can't go to the cool side and they can have a heat stroke, like a little heat stroke, where you'll find your snake I've never had it, but I actually have talked to breeders that have the snake sitting in there. It's either upside down or it's sitting there with its mouth open on its side. If it's still alive or upside down at that point, you need to pull that thing out and check your temps because that snake is probably on the verge of death. It could be another disease, but most of the time, 90% of the time, if you're seeing those symptoms and there's other symptoms like mucus or anything like that, it's because your snake is getting overheated. So that's just a quick tip for you guys on that. So, besides that, if both of those things are met and it's under a third, you know, one-sixth, one-fifth, one-eighth, and as long as you have a heat gradient, that's, as, that's all there is right there to it, to figure it out. But I know that you guys are probably going to this video because you want to figure out, okay, I have this size tub, what should I, you know, do it? And you want a concrete answer from me. 
So I'll give you guys a few recommendations of what I would use. So I'll try to do this as quickly as possible not to waste you guys' time. And let's get straight into this last segment. So with this guy right here, this is a six quart. You can either use this right here or back heat. I would use back heat because in the chance of an overheat where it gets too hot, 100 plus degrees, you're gonna be better off. But this can work just fine on the bottom as well. Anything under, we're talking about Sterilite right now, anything under 28 quart, you can use this. When you get over 28 quart, I would use four inch. When you get up to 41 quarts, you can use four inch or six inch. I would use four inch because you have more of a heat gradient and if anything will be able to overheat, your snakes will, you know, be able to survive a lot longer than if you, you know, had six inch. But if your room gets really cold in the winter or if there's, you know, just not heat enough heat or power in that to keep it at that temperature, then you can bump it up to like a six inch, but never above a six inch um, for your 41 quarts. With your 20 gallons, I would use six inch or four inch, just like your 41 quarts. And 10 gallons, always use this, okay? Unless you're having some real big issues and you could use four, but I would always use this. So, hope you guys did enjoy this video. As a rule of thumb, make sure you have a gradient and make sure it's under 130. And you guys should be good with your heating outlet. If you did like this video, please give it a like. And of course, if you like the channel, please consider subscribing. We upload main basically every single day to make sure you guys get the best possible care information to keep your ball pythons as happy and as healthy as possible. So as I said, hope you guys did enjoy this video. Uh, if you guys have any questions as well, this is probably going to be the video that gets the most comments and questions. Um, you guys can tell me what size tub you have. Tell me the dimensions, please, either vivariums or tanks. Leave it down in the comment section below, and I'll try to get back to you on what size heat tape or heat pad I would use. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.